Hey guys, we are here with another slow stitching in a meditation journal video. I will explain this in just a minute. So not long ago, I was looking at my Facebook page as I always do. And one of you all who is um, friends with me on Facebook posted pictures of this caterpillar in your yard. I don't remember which one of you it was, so if you recognize the photo and it was you, please say so in the comments below, because I was an idiot and didn't make note. Um, but I really thought, you know, I, that's kind of inspiring to me, and I love that little caterpillar shape and form. I love the background of him here kind of on the distressed wood. So we're gonna have this just open in the background, and we're gonna create something inspired by our little friend, the caterpillar. So I've chosen this uh, piece of striped fabric for my background and I took a couple of different colors of yarn and I wrapped them around this little um, craft stick frame that I made hot, that I hot glued together. I just hot glued two long craft sticks to two short ones. It wasn't rocket science. Um, and then I sewed it down the middle. I didn't really care what color thread I used because I don't think it's really gonna show when all is said and done anyway. Now we are going to cut it off the frame. And you could make, um, if you make dolls or you're making zombies or anything like I am and you want hair for the zombie doll, this is how you could make hair for the doll, by the way. Okay, so now we're going to take our yarn that's been sewn together and we'll do one side at a time, carefully holding on to this side. I'm gonna take my little pet brush. This is for small dogs or cats, I think. And I'm gonna just start brushing. And what will happen with this acrylic yarn, as you can see, is it's gonna start pulling the fibers apart and doing that to it. Now I'm gonna take this, and we're not gonna throw this away, I'm gonna put it in my little scrap pot and we, we can use that for pillow stuffing or something, pin cushion stuffing. So just keep brushing. Turn it around and do the other side. Now I do have these really two long strands that I'm going to cut off. This was just yarn I had downstairs. I didn't go buy anything special. Don't do that. Use what you have. I got the idea for doing it this way from some of the doll YouTubers that, that make over their dolls. They do this kind of thing with yarn all the time to get their doll hair. So that's pretty good before we go any farther with it. It's way too big for our page and it's much bigger and wider than what I really want. So I'm going to cut it probably about the question is, do I want the blue end or the, I think I kind of want the blue end or the purple end. So I'm going to cut it right about here and separate those. That other piece can be used for something else later. Now, I think this is too long. The sides are too long. So we're going to give it a haircut. I 
Again, all of that's gonna get saved because it'll be used for future projects. Now I'm gonna take what's left, and you'll notice I wasn't real careful about making sure it's even because it's not about that. You'll notice I wasn't really sure, careful about making sure it's even because it wasn't about that. Hang on, let me plug my phone in and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Yeah, make sure we're turned on. Okay, so as I was saying, you'll notice I wasn't real careful about making sure they were trimmed evenly because it's not about that. Um, I'm gonna, again, hold this one side and I'm gonna brush out the other side. which will fray those cut edges a little bit. Right, and then the other side. It's harder to do when it's so short. Which is why you want to do some of this before you trim it. Good. Then I think what I'm going to do is just do this, you know, like the hairdressers do when it's, they want to make the edges less like straight. I'm not a hairdresser. Don't ask me to cut your hair. That's a bad idea. And just keep brushing and trimming until you get something that you're happy with, which I think I am. I like that. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of my other fibers that I have here. And I'm going to use these for the body. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie a series of knots. You could also braid it, as I say that. How does it look braided? Mm, no, I'm gonna do the knots. I like the knots better. So I'm gonna do a bunch of knots kind of close together. Well, I'm going to try to do a series of knots close together. That one was kind of wonky, but you know, it's 2020. What do you expect? Because, you know, I don't know. You want it to be sort of lumpy and textured. Yeah. Now for the stitching. So I'm going to get a dark gray thread and a needle. Oh, here's some already on a needle. Isn't that handy? Okay, tie knot one end. 
put the reading glasses on. Alrighty, so then do I want it that way? Do I want it that way? Do I want it that way? No, I think I want it this way. And then the other question is, do I want some trim behind it? So, because that could be a thing. Again, it's inspired by our little caterpillar friend. It's not supposed to exactly represent our caterpillar friend. Okay, so first we need to stitch these on because I do think I'm gonna put that on there. And for that, we might want a lighter color thread. So maybe this floss here, which is DMC color 739, and I believe this is 535, this dark gray. Okay, so let's, we're gonna use just all, whatever this is, this I think is three strands. I'm gonna just use this one up. It might be all six, I don't know. It's a leftover piece from another project. I'm gonna toss a couple of pins in here so I don't lose track of where I want these. And I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna stitch up these holes in the side of the ribbon right here. I'm gonna try to zoom in right here so you can see what I'm doing. Oops. It's helpful if you put a knot in the end of the thread. You know, just saying. So there's holes on either side of this trim. So if you just do a running stitch in and out of those holes, it should be pretty easy, quick and easy. like that. Okay, I took some of this um, print, this light, light brown print. I tore a piece so that it would be ragged. I'm going to put it horizontally across here and I've got some light bluish green floss. I don't have a DMC number for this because this is one that was gifted to me and I don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, we're going to pin this down. And then I'm going to attach it with this floss. And I think we're gonna do sort of a seed stitch, which is single stitches of floss in a random pattern, not in a straight line or anything. I'll do a few so that you can see. And you can do them, of course, as small or as large as, you know, you want to do. There's no, no rules. I find myself frequently turning it or my stitches have a habit of going always in the same direction. So if you're like me, you might find that a handy tip. Oops. 
So they're just a variety of stitches like this, different directions, and I'm gonna go all the way across this way. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So our brown strip is attached, and I did um, do that sort of thinning hair cutting thing that you see them do. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. Anyway, and brush it a little bit more. And you'll see this side is darker than this side. I do think I like the lighter side. So I'm gonna place it right about here, I think. Maybe, oh, maybe up there. And I want our phrase that's gonna be on here. It says, there is only your way. Actually, I think I might want it up there. Okay, first we're gonna get this on. So we are gonna sew the hairy trim on at the same time we sew the knotted fibers on. And we're gonna do a couching stitch where we just go up one side and over the knotted fibers and down the other side to attach it. We're gonna use this dark gray thread. I'm gonna to try to hold it in place because I don't think there's really gonna be any great way to pin it. I tried that off camera, it didn't work very well. So I'm gonna go up one side, down the other side. There we go. And then do that again. I'll try to zoom in here with the camera if I can, so y'all can see. But just up one side. Down the other side. between the knots. Okay, something like that. I'm gonna work on getting that attached and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got our fibers on. I do think I'm gonna add some buttons. And then of course we're gonna sew our phrase on. So let's do the phrase first. So these are printed on fabric that's meant to go through your printer, but you also can iron cotton muslin to freezer paper and do it that way. I buy this paper on mm, Amazon. It's just a pain sometimes to peel the backing paper off, but that's okay. Sometimes I don't bother. I just leave it. Like I'm tempted to do right now. You have to like score it with something sharp and then there we go. It's probably not as hard as I'm making it out to be to peel it off, but it's, you know, I'm not young anymore. My fingers don't always work the way they should. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna leave it raggedy because I kind of like the way that looks. I'm going to use some regular sewing thread, more of like buttonhole twist thread. It's in an off-white color, and I'm going to sew that down. With just a um, running stitch. My fabric um, when I'm stitching usually gets a bit puckery um, because I don't use a hoop. And 
I'm not too worried about it. And uh, if I can and I haven't used anything that can't take the heat, then I will just give it a good press before I um, attach it to a mounting board or put it in the book. Most of the time with the meditation book, I don't uh, bother. Uh, sometimes I do, it depends. With this one, I may not press it because I most of those fibers I put on there are acrylic and they can't really take the heat. If you try, they're gonna just melt because it's basically plastic. It's good to experiment with the materials that you're using if you have a scrap of it um, against the hot iron to see if it can take the heat or not, if you're not sure. Okay. Sometimes when I haven't left myself enough thread to tie it on the other way, I do this and I clip the threads and I tie them this way. In case you're wondering. Okay. Turn those a bit. Okay. I'm gonna trim these just a little bit, but I'm not gonna trim them all the way out because I kind of like that they're sticking up. All right. Next, we need some more thread. So Anne Brooke, um, textile artist here on YouTube, um, it, I love her channel. She uses linen buttons a lot, which of course I can't ever find anywhere um, without them costing a lot of money. So these are ones that I made using um, muslin, a little bit of cotton batting um, sandwiched around a, a washer. There's a washer in the middle of here. And um, I just make my own version which we're gonna tack down now because I wanna put one on the bottom. Now, it's, this is not like a regular button where it has to be like sewn a million times because it's not, there's not gonna ever be any strain put on this button. You're not opening and closing it all the time. So I'm just gonna do a couple quick stitches. A few more buttons up here. I'm gonna do the bottom, the bigger one at the bottom. Sorry about the dinging, my uh, Facebook friends, uh, creative art friends are having a big conversation. Many of us are, um, let's see, some of us are in the way of the fires. Some of us are in the path of Hurricane Sally. <laughs> so everybody's just kind of checking in with everybody else today. It is Friday, September, um, not Friday, holy cow, it's Wednesday, September 16th today. As I'm filming this. Anyway. Okay. Enough of that. So I have that on there. And then I'm going to turn it over and do I want to add anything else? I actually don't think I do. I kind of, I really just really, I like the way that looks. Expire, inspired by our caterpillar friend. I don't think there's anything like parts or sometimes I'll add, you know, crazy bits. I never kind of know with these things. There's no wrong way to do it. I actually do have a little bit of a label. Let's see. I buy old clothes at the thrift store sometimes and I use them for um, fabric for slow stitching. So putting that down there, I kind of like that. And then what, what about putting these here? I kind of like that too, so I take that back. So whether you're working with paper and paint or you're working with fabric, it's basically just collage. So 
mix up your textures and your patterns and your colors and you know allow yourself to be inspired by a photo or um, an idea that doesn't mean you have to copy it exactly you're trying to be inspired by it and create a piece of art artwork um, inspired by that I'm gonna have I'm gonna have more about that coming up in the channel uh, if you follow me on social media you know I've been doing some gel pen drawings on tone tanned paper um, here's a secret those are inspired by photos from nature and um, I'm going to be sharing uh, my process for that. Coming up in another video. This is a little more challenging to sew through because this is an old hook and eye closure, probably from the back of a bra. I don't know where this came from. It was in my grandmother's sewing box and she and my great grandmother were old school. So they, you know, if they wore out a shirt then they didn't just throw the whole shirt away. They took all the fabric scraps and buttons and things off of it first, um, just in case they could use them to mend something else in the future. So um, this came off of the back of something. I don't know what it came off the back of. It's dark brown though. So if it was off the back of a bra, go grandma. <laughs> you know, just saying, it's a racy color. Okay. Especially for my Italian Catholic grandmother, holy cow. Yep, I like the way that looks exactly. Okay, so then I just take my meditation journal and I usually use either tacky glue or yes paste and we find it the next blank page and we tape it in. Right about here. So let me get it, uh, tape it in, glue it in. Let me get it glued in and I'll be right back. Okay, there it is. That's a cute addition to our meditation journal. So I hope it gives you some ideas of just some different things you can do if you're into journaling. Maybe incorporate a little bit of stitching in your journaling. You don't have to have a complete fabric book. This is just made with um, mixed media paper or drawing paper and um, it's working out great. These squares are about five inches so this book is just a little bit bigger than that um, which works out wonderful. So anyway, there you have it. I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you will and you're new here. Also, check out my video description for ways to support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups. Not just for me, but yes for me, but not just for me. All of your favorite creators here on YouTube, most of them have a way to um, support their free content. And I know they would all appreciate you doing that if you can. So check out their video descriptions. If you can't find an Etsy store or a PayPal tip jar or Patreon or something else, um, email them and ask because maybe they have a way and it's just not for whatever reason not in there. Um, besides that, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye guys.